Thank you very soon. All right, that's good. So this recording will be on the uh, YouTube video for just sharing URL. So, you know, you won't be able to, you know, search Mimaki Tomo webinar to find this, but then uh, you will be receiving specific URL to uh, reach to the, uh, you know, this webinar session in the YouTube later on. So today's agenda, I would like to go, you know, two things basically. Um, the first is ID cut. The second one is two and a half D printing. Well, those are you know requested in a previous meeting by uh, Craig uh, to uh, you know one the, each one of you in the meeting what you would like to know. I'm not sure you know particularly what you want to know, but you know I'm putting you know my uh, previous experience you know relates to the you know, what a mistake I made for you know during the ID cut how I how I survived you know when I have a mistake. So I you know I'm I will be happy if I can put you know, the additional five dollars of the uh, you know, your you know your knowledge base from uh, my uh, you know the bad experience before. Um, and obviously you know as the time is allowed you know uh, I'd like to have a QA session basically just a you know, generic discussion with you gentlemen and uh, basically you know five of us and we just you know discuss you know and uh, make an interaction of you know what do you you know what do you see you know type of the customer type of the application type of mistake you know the which you know you want to share you know those things to begin with i'd like to refresh first you know introduction uh the refreshing your basics so today you know the I will be talking about you know, something about a cut and the rip and uh, you know Adobe Illustrator, you know those type of the thing. But before that, I just wanna you know refresh you know something. If you know that's fine. If you don't know that's fine. You know uh, just a uh, you know generic um, knowledge base or definition of uh, you know the something. The first one definition of the cut. In our cutting proto technology, we have you know more than two types of uh, cutting you know which is capable. So basically, you know, doesn't matter you know if you talk about a CG or CF series for roll fed or a flatbed type, but we support three different uh, the type of the cut. The first one is normal cut. Me personally, I call it his cut. This cut is only cutting adhesive layer of the PVC and remaining the backside paper, the liner paper of a you know, raw material. Doesn't need to be raw material. It can be you know, the seed material or rigid material, as long as it only specified the, you know, the, you know, the layer to cut. So that means a kiss cut. The second is a die cut. The die cut is uh, basically cutting through doesn't matter if you have a paper or a signboard or a, you know, normal PVC, self adhesive PVCs, but whatever it's cutting through entire media, let's call it die cut. So completing a cutting through. The half cut, which you know, some people you know, call as a perforate cut, which is basically you know, cutting you know, like a you know, sewing machine. So it's basically you know, cut through and bring up the knife for some distance and cutting through again. So it remains a little small tabs to keep uh, you know, the object in a position, right? So depends on the what type of a cutting product or print and cut machine you have, the supporting the cutting, you know, the cutting type is different. Starting with a CG cutting product, uh, so it normally does kiss cut and half cut because it's a roll fed printer and rolling back and forth. So it shouldn't do die cut because as soon as you do a die cut, the pinch roller will, you know, the, you know, the track the wherever the object is out. So that will make a you know, media jam during a you know, seat forward or backwards. So in order to prevent that jamming, it is required to use, you know, only half cut and kiss cut, but not die cut, right? But die cut is finally supported by new AR series, you know, the cutting product, the CG AR series, which released in May. So what it does is, you know, the CG AR series comes as an optional item, the you know, sticky seat, you know, back seat material. 
because the AR cutter supports the paper craft application. In order to do a paper craft, you need a die cut. But how you can do die cut in the wall fed printer, wall fed plotter, is you basically put uh, you know, the packaging tape on the adhesive, adhesive film, and then you can cut through the, uh, you know, only this, um, the, the, the paper, you know, the packaging paper. So it will not cut through to the, uh, you know, this, you know, adhesive paper. But it actually makes a die cut application for um, packaging paper. So again, die cut is only activated or available in application with the AR series. Other CG, other CG series, uh, and, uh, you know, print and cut machine, you're supposed to do only half cut. Oh, sorry, only a kiss cut and a half cut. For CF3s, um, you can do the kiss cut and die cut. You can still do half cut, but the CF3 does not really do like a kind of pressure control, but it's meant to, you know, it's meant to cut through most of the time. So you can't really, you know, support or you know, the maker definition or definition setting for the half cut. So CF3 is the majority is the normal cut and die cut, or kiss cut and die cut. Kiss cut is still the, you know, the not a you know, major case because for CF2 cutting plotter, you have, uh, you know, the swivel knife on the A channel, but that swivel knife also does do the, you know, die cut. But you cannot really say, hey, do a 60 grams of the, uh, you know, the normal cut. Because the table on the CF2 cutting plotter, the rigid table is not like a completely level. There is also you know, one or two millimeters difference between one point and the other point. So even you expect a you know, kiss cut to be equalized for every position, it cannot happen. So you can still do like um, some partly the uh, sticker cut, but um, you cannot expect the uh, normal cut like I you know pressure is equal in everywhere in the table. That's how machine is designed. Even customers expecting, hey, I expected for a you know, half millimeter of the uh, you know the tolerance, it's not going to happen because I'm um, mechanical designing that machine uh, only the only design as best as a two millimeters of tolerance from one point to other point of, uh, you know, the depth difference. The secondly, the method of a cutting, cut path generation method. When you work on print and cut or ID cut with a cutting plotter, you go through to the raster link. So when you generate a cut path for raster link to, you know, print with a printer and cut with a CJB or you know, CJFX for the you know, ID cut, use spot color name. The cut control one, two, you know, or half or whatever the spot color name. Spot color name in the Illustrator is how raster link um, the detect the cutting path. When you do normal cut, you know, from from Adobe Illustrator to a cutting plotter, or even for CJB, you know, UCJB or CJB for only cutting uh, cutting method you will go through, you know, from a fine cut directly to cutting plotter. At that moment, use a separate layer or just using cut line with a black or whatever the color uh, from a fine cut. You don't need to realize to, uh, you don't need to, you know, the make a spot color in a fine cut to send to a cutting plotter. So the spot color is only required to read the cut pass in rastering. Remember that, please. The third one, which is the last of, the uh, last one in this page is about a software license uh, in, from Mimaki. So individual software has different way to, you know, the, you know, uh, organize the, the detector license. Be I start with the Rastering 6, uh, sorry, the Rastering series. Rastering series comes with a 60 days trial. If you just download from website, if you got a CD, um, you know, to install, even you don't have a serial key for the license, you can use a 60 days trial. In order to verify the license, you must have 28 digit serial key on the software package in order to uh, enter into the license menu and activate by a website or by internet. 
in that case, your raster link on that computer is licensed for, uh, you know, for, you know, uh, for unlimited time. The serial key cannot be used at the same time more than two computers. If you want to use one serial key for two computers, you need to deactivate one computer and use for other computer, and deactivate other computer and use other computer, such and such. Otherwise, you can buy you know, $1,500 of you know, additional package, which comes with a CD and a 28 digit license code to activate two computers if you want to. Um, there is a frequent question, hey, is USB dongle be substituted for 28 digit serial key? The answer is no. USB dongle is only required to connect to specific printers. It is about the licensing between the, uh, you know, the rustering connection to the certain level of, uh, you know, certain, certain level of a product. For example, JFX 200, UJF 7151, those machines, you know, which is a more high-end printer, you need to put a USB dongle into a, you know, operation, the rustering computer to print, even you activated with a 28-digit serial key. So USB dongle is totally different license, you know, that license method comparing to, you know, 28, uh, uh, um, 28 digit serial key. So for specific, specific printer operation, you must have a 28 digit serial key as well as USB dongle for uh, specific printers. Because to FineCut 8, the cutting software, FineCut 8 is weird. Um, the, because the disk itself is meant to be a license. So when you install the software, even through website or from CD, software installer ask you, asks you to set a software disk into the disk drive to, uh, for, for the license check. It happens every installation and every time you update from rustering, uh, from FineCut 8 version 2 to version 3, from version 3 to 4, every single update, you are required to put a CD. That's the reason customer frequently sending an email to Mimach service, hey, I lost a CD, can I, uh, can I have one? Such and such. Officially, we need to sell FineCut 9 because, you know, everything we sell is not free. Free is the most, most expensive item for us. But you know, as a technical purpose, that as a technical purpose, I'm gonna tell you that the, as long as you've got the copied CD from FineCut 8, any version of FineCut 8 into the blank CD, as long as that CD has a name tag as a CD, you know, the CD, AI, whatever, whatever, with the same as original name on a CD label, it works as a license. So if you have a customer, you need to you know, support in the last, uh, last uh, 30 minutes, you know, one hour, you can use that method. <coughs> for FineCut 9, the way, CR, uh, the way license ver uh, verification is totally different. So when you install from a website, it comes with a 60, 60 days trial, no license is required. After 60 days, you know, your functionality stops and you must enter serial key. The serial key is in the software package of FineCut. If you lose the uh, FineCut 9, um, the FineCut 9 software package, you can do two ways. Find a CD from FineCut 8. You go for the FineCut 9 installation, so you can convert from a disk to the, uh, you know, the, um, the license code, the serial key to activate. If you do not have a CD drive to even, you know, generate a, um, the serial key from FineCut 8 disk, just call a Mimaki support to buy a FineCut 9, uh, the package comes with the, uh, um, the serial key, which is $550 for customer plus freight. Raster link tool is a free download. It's a, um, it's a built-in, sorry, it's a plugin software for, uh, uh, it's a plugin software for Adobe Illustrator or CorelDRAW. So you can convert from a line to a cut line in a spot color in one pass, just to make it easy to uh, export the file to the raster link software. 
It's a license free. You can download and install as many computer, as many versions of Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw as you want. The cutting link is, uh, you know, the, what people normally say, cutting server for ID cut. It's a separate software, even from raster link or fine cut or raster link tool to, uh, uh, to install on your Windows. It's a free download and license free. So you can also download and install as many computers as you want. Any question in this uh, slide before we go to more professional uh, professional uh, agenda? No question. Um, with, sorry. Uh, with with uh, Fine Cut 9, if the 60 day trial error, I mean, uh, expire, can we? delete it and then re-download, do we get another 60 day? Um, I've never tried, but I don't think so. So if you wanna do if you wanna do something easy, I'd recommend, you know, when you find uh, the the fine cut package, just take a photo of it. And then, you know, whatever the computer you need to activate the license, just use that. Because from my experience, the serial key is not for the you know, network activation for the you know, fine cut nine. So the one serial key works as many computers as you want. Fong, please correct me if I'm wrong. That's correct. The serial okay. key can be a multiple PCs. Right? Yeah, because it's not a, it's not a, you know the the internet licensed yeah. network licensed. Yeah, answering your question, after the 60 day trial, it, it writes it into the registry of Windows. So if you install it again, it's going to know. You can go through the registry and delete all the entries for Fine Cut and, and you'll be able to do it again. But no, it does write it into the registry. Okay. So it, well, you know, so you cannot, you cannot re register again if you only delete Fine Cut and reinstall Fine Cut, right? You need to have Correct. to go through the yeah. registration. You need to go into the registry and delete everything there is to, to do with Fine Cut, and then you'll be able to do it again. Okay, it's nice to know, just call yeah. Bill Gates. Yeah, well that, well, that was Fine Cut 8, I'm not sure about 9, but 8, eight uh, was like that. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure well, about Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming 9 will be the same, but yeah, that, that, that was Fine Cut 8. Okay, thanks for your information. Anyone else has a question? Okay, no, no problem. Let me see why it says uh, Benjamin Lucas or something. Let me just, uh, okay, it, it's gone. I think I'm opening something in Google. That's all right. Um, all right, uh, just moving forward to the ID cut function. So, you know, before we go to our details of how you do ID cut, how you set up and so on, I just wanna, you know, transfer, you know, my understanding and understanding what the benefit of ID cut function. I've got three items and I would like to find out if you find any, you know, anything else as a benefit. So let me go for uh, let me go first. First one is auto cut data export. So what it is is normally to do a print and cut with a resume mark, you need to print from a computer, and you need to move that media to cutting plotter. And uh, after you detect the media and you detect uh, so you scan the media, you detect the resume mark, and you need to go back to computer that is holding the cutting data and you physically push the button to send the job. However, the ID cut allows you not to go back to the computer, but it automatically scans the barcode to understand what the data code, and it automatically pulls the data from, uh, you know, the, from a cutting server, from a cutting link. So you can actually save your you know, five steps to go back to the computer, two clicks to you know, export that data, and I uh, you know another five steps to go back to cutting the plotter. Well, it's Australia, so it is really, you know, the good benefit, you know, comparing to the uh, time, time, you know, time you spend. 
The second is auto, -cut, auto, -cut, uh, auto cutting data rotation, right? So how it works is, uh, you know, doesn't matter which, you know, rota which uh, rotation, you will reset the media for the cutting, but the ID code also remembers what the direction of the data. So if you are in a morning shift, print something, and you just you know, left over the, you know, that print for the you know, night shift guy. And that night shift guy doesn't know how heck you did for this printing. But you know that he can just set the media on whatever, whichever the direction he wants, and then let it scan the ID code. So the cutting server, the, the cutting link automatically rotates the data for 90 degrees, 180 degrees, or 270 degrees to prevent a mistake. Number three, auto search next job. To me, this is the best, this is the most, you know, the biggest benefit of, uh, biggest benefit of ID, the, from, for the ID card. What it does is, if you used to print, you know, the job number A, 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 just consistently, it's still easy to print and cut because you just tell, you know, cutting, uh, the, the, the cutting PC to send the same data for five times. So after it cuts in you know, one set, it automatically scans the next set for the you know, first, first mark, and it just continues for five times as, as long as it's the same data. But what if you have, you print a number, you know, the data A, data D, data S, data F, data M, such and such. That way, previously without ID mark or any other competitors, you know, the printing solution, you need to send A, S, F, M individually. Also, after you need to detect a crop mark of a cutting data the, on, the, on the print for every single job. So you can only do the you know, ID, you can only do continuous cut at uh, the person attended person attended. However, by using ID card, the most of the machine, well, all the machine which supports ID card also has auto scanning. What it does is after bring, after cutting the, you know, the data, the first data, it scans automatically as many as you select on how many, how many times it scans, what the width you scanned on the cutting product or UCJV 300. It scans until it finds the next, uh, next ID. So that allows you to combine with you know, the first and second um, the benefit. It actually does the automatic the data export for the cutting for as many different data as you are sending. Just a concluding, um, you know, concluding, uh, you know, the benefit as a conclusion, ID cut function enables you to automate 50 meters preprint world to cut continuously without any operators. So what it does is basically you print for 50 meters in a, you know, the night shift. You come back in the office in the morning and you laminate for 50 meters. After that, you can just set the first data in a cutting plotter. It actually cuts and then detect the next job and cuts again, even it's a different data. Let me just show you a quick video here. Let me check if I'm adding audio here. So it is from the beginning and it's only cutting the uh, different data, but it's all A5, you know, print sample from an uh, EcoSorgent printer. The resolution is not so good. All right, so once it's detecting, uh, you know, ID, Sorry, you know, detector ID in the beginning and the register mark in the four corners. And it just starts cutting, you know, 
So I start cutting, I know, the half cut, the half cut. And then after a certain job, right here. So just wait until our job is finished. The first job is finished for the three lines. So I just set up this with the auto cut, so it's cut to the end of the media. And next to it, it starts scanning the, uh, is it scan? Yeah, it starts scanning the next barcode without any additional operations. And you can actually set what does with you know, from a right to left, you know, how many centimeters it will you want it to scan and what the length of the data you want to scan as well. So it gives you more flexibility of the, uh, um, the operation. So I think we detect our next ID. I can see because it's the same height. All right, it starts, you know, detecting a razor mark now. All right, let's move on. All right, uh, this is to refresh the, uh, you know, what product from Mimaki does support ID cut function. All right, I just have, you know, two diagrams here. The first one on the left-hand side is a vinyl or seed application, which means a wall fed printer and a cutting plotter. The right-hand side is a rigid application for flatbed printer and cutting plotter. So the rigid, so for the vinyl, vinyl wall to wall plotter, printer and plotter, we have uh, JV300 series and 100 series, as well as new 330 series that support um, ID print. For the print and cutter, we've got CJV300 and 330 series. So anything with a 300 series, 330 series, or 100 series does support ID print. If it's a print and cut machine, you can do print and ID cut in one machine. If you have only a printer model, you must have print and cutter machine or a cutting plotter which supports ID cut to combine for print and cut. For example, if you have the, uh, you know, well, you know, we've got some campaign went on uh, to the last month. We got JV100-160 and CGFX, uh, CG160 FX plotter. So it is meant to be an ID cut combination. So people, Print ID on JV100 can do ID cut on CGFX plus. Even the customer who has only printer model, uh, UJV100 and the UCJV300, you can still work as the uh, print and ID cut with only UCJV300 for print and cut combination. When you put, after you print with a UJV100, which is a printer model, and you can cut with UCJV300. So you don't need to have always cutting plotter as, as long as you have something which support ID print and something to support ID cut. So you can use any combination of those diagrams. Um, by the way, JV330 is a new model which we will release, uh, well, we press released in uh, end of February. 
And, uh, you know, we've got a demo machine installed in uh, New South Wales, Victoria recently. We will, uh, setting, we will start setting a product from uh, you know, June 1st at this moment. So it is a 40% faster machine from uh, you know, previous model 300 series, but we have only solvent, eco-solvent printer. And we have a CJV330, which is an uh, eco-solvent printer and cut machine as well. We also have CG60 or 130AR series, which is a replacement of a current SR3 cutting plotter. What's the benefit on this is it does an ID cut, whereas the SR3 model didn't do it, and it is a very low price comparing to FX Plus model. Not only that, but if you want to do two layers cut, such as you know, sticker cut and a half cut, so kiss cut and a half cut combination job, you couldn't do with a CGFX Plus, but you can do with a CGAR series. So it is, you know, basically the benefit. It's cheap, it's more convenient, and it does ID cut. For rigid application, you can combine with UGF series or JFX and CF series. Just for your information, though, what if we've got a printer as a world fed? and cutter as a the cutter as a rigid application, yes, you can still do ID cut. I normally do the sampling with a UCJV300 printed and cut by CF22, so it works. For the software requirement, the benefit from Mimaki ID cut is you don't need any additional investment for software, additional purchase of a software. So you've got rastering 6 plus or 7, which is comes with all printers. Rastering tool is free download. Cutting link is free download, right? You can do most of the thing by those three software for ID cut. However, the, it's optional. You can use additional thing by having a fine cut 9. But fine cut 9 is also bundled in all cutters and print and cut. So you don't need to have it, but you can do, you know, the more additional things with a fine cut nine. I will explain later. All right, just uh, you know the basic combination, basic configuration of uh, you know um, the uh, workflow of ID cut. So this is the the most simple setup. Regards to having one computer, print and cut machine, and software ready. So you basically install Adobe. Illustrator and raster link tool inside. You can substitute with a Corel Draw if you want to. And you can install raster link tool as a plugin on Adobe Illustrator or Corel Draw. We need this software in order to make a cutting path as a spot color name. Also export to a raster link with a raster link button. You need to install Rastering 6 Plus as well. It is to add the Rego mark, registration mark, also ID cut mark to and print uh, print with a uh, you know, printer. Cutting link is to detect the ID on a cutting plotter and to send back an ID data to get the correct data and correct uh, you know the correct data and correct uh, you know direction of the data. So it is a recommended to this setup is to be recommended for customer who's got only one PC for operating ID card or design an ID card or a customer only has one room. Okay, again, this is the most simple setting from uh, for ID card. I'm gonna give you, you know, my, uh, you know, the example. I think some of you might also have got uh, this experience. This is advanced setting for ID card. In case artwork PC and the print PC is different. If uh, you know print business is big enough to have two different department, one does uh, one does design and other one does output, the configuration works for such a business. Also, customer who's got a printer and cutting plotter in a different room, it works as well. And the customer who has got a different PC, one for artwork and one for rip and cut, it works as well. So just as an example, so I've got three PCs in here. 
first computer is for artwork, so it's artwork room, not in the print room. The person, the operator needs to install uh, you know, Adobe Illustrator and raster link tool as well. So in this PC, you design the artwork. Also, you need to add the uh, uh, you need to add the uh, cut line as a spot color, spot color name. The you know the cut controller one, two, three, whatever. After you design, you export this data, transfer the data by a hot folder to this print PC, or you know, move with a USB memory if you want to. Once you export the data or import the data into Rustering 6 Plus, it opens as the it opens as their data like this in Adobe in Rustering, cut and color. Okay, two layers job for print and cut. On this PC Rustering 6, you need to add the resume mark and ID. To send to our uh, to send to send a Mimachi printer. After you print, you can just cut the sheet, cut the media, and bring it to the other room. If a cutting plotter is in the other room, and you can set up in a cutting plotter. For a cutting plotter PC, you need to pre-install cutting link. Also, you need to set up this cutting link to output the data from Rustering 6 to that cutting link. In the Rustering 6 Plus, you can go to environment and uh, option here, and go to communication setting. So in here, this is how you select which computer the raster link will send the ID cut data to. So it can be the same PC, or if you have a different room for different PC for cutting, you can send this to, you can specify this computer for a cutting computer as a destination of a ID cut data to send over. So you need to preset. You set up the uh, you, the you move on uh, the print media to cutting plotter, and you just let it, let the cutting plotter detect ID, so it automatically pulls out the data from computer and send over to a cutting plotter. Just going for the uh, you know, tips, you know, including my mistake and things I sometimes remember and sometimes ask to add some and so on. Just as some tips though. If you want to do a, uh, the ID cut function, print data must be more than 70 millimeters, seven centimeter uh, or more to add ID mark. Sometimes I, you know, for the training purpose, I write down the five centimeter square in Illustrator and the cutting line as well. And in front of the customer, I put into the uh, you know, rustering computer and click on ID, the click on ID cut function, but it gives you an error message. Well, basically, you know, the first thing I remember at that moment is the cutting the data is too small. So you need to have you know, one data is 70 millimeters. If you have the you know, little sticker for five centimeters, and five pieces in a row, and five lines, for example, that's okay. The 70 millimeters is the size of the you know, size of the one job. So as long as your job include more than you know more than 10 stickers and so on, then you know that you won't you don't need to worry about. The second tips, CGFX2 Plus only support USB connection, but no Ethernet. Right, it's uh, the first generation printer from Mimaki in the 20 years ago technology. Well, you know, it was beating in the market before, but now you know, we have more competitors. So CGFX Plus only does USB. So if you want a distance to send, you can do with printer, but you couldn't do with a cutting plotter. Also, the CGSR3 does support you, uh, Ethernet, but didn't support uh, ID card. So now we've got a new CGAR series to support Ethernet connection as well as ID card. So I hope that the, you know, this will be one of the solution for you know, uh, some customers. 
CGFX2 Plus only performs kiss cut and half cut at a time. As some of you already are aware of, CGFX2 Plus has got two, uh, you know, two gather, two, two channels of their cutting on the one machine. The front side is for their cut rubber, and the back side is a cutting sponge. So cutting rubber only works for kiss cut, cutting sponge only works for half cut. So unfortunately, you cannot combine the half cut job, uh, sorry, kiss cut job and half cut job in the same job and cut at the same time. So if you do that, you need to, you know, you need to cut the kiss cut, then you need to reset the media, detect the visual mark and do a kiss cut, uh, do a half cut job at a separate time. All right, functional limitation. The other functionality, you know, I want to share is if how to deal when ID cut failed after printing. All right, if you printed a job with ID cut, which is great, but as soon as you put, uh, you know, the print into a cutting plotter, you start detecting the ID and it's errored. You detect a mark and it's errored. Okay, because of a setting issue, then do you need to reprint the job, right? If you don't know, you know how to deal with, yes, you probably need to reprint, but I'm telling you that the, you know, how to deal with that case, right? Once you set ID card with print, right? You need to go back to uh, raster link or raster link six or seven, and go go back to the uh, ID the ID ID cut function, and you need to deselect the ID card. Right. At this moment, make sure you remain the uh, crop mark as is without changing the size. Okay. And then after you uh, after you cancel the ID, uh, you deselect the ID cut. Then go to the execution menu of rastering six or seven, and send only cut job. Right. At the printer side you need to disable ID detection on the printer because we want, basically, we would like to convert the job from ID cut job to no ID cut job. Means I don't want the printer to detect ID detection, but only detect a crop mark. So by only detecting a crop mark, you can only do, you can, you know, treat this as they are just a simple cut job, not even ID cut job. So that's basically how I deal with the uh, you know this situation when I when it happened at the customer or when I create uh, you know, samples. All right, um, I just wanna you know do some tips, additional tips for the applications about a performing two layers cut. You probably you know have experienced you know that you ended up in front of the customer. Hey, customer wants to do two layers cut. I can think about two patterns of two layers cut. One is you know, the cutting box samples. So you combine the cutting, the die cut, and the creasing of, the, of the, you know, the little package samples. Or you combine kiss cut and half cut for the sticker piece, for the, for the one page sticker sheet. Right? I'm telling you, you know, how to make it. Or what printer to, you know, what, what printer you can make it. All right, first one is a packaging sample. Cut and crease. In order to make cut and crease, you need to have a specific cutting plotter, either CFL605 or CF2 or CF22. For printing on a packaging board, you can do it with a CJB, a UCJB300 because you know, by increasing a head gap to two millimeters, to two and a half millimeters, or you can simply do a UGF six or you know, UGF six uh, sixty forty two. Either you select the printer and cut machine and cutter for doing this package, or if you do printer and cutter, the method to do this, you know, this are two layers cut is different, right? I'm telling you the first one is printer and cut machine plus cutter. How you do is, you know, I send this data, you know, this, uh, you know, packaging data to you the last week. You can just play around later on, right? What you can do is from Adobe Illustrator, 
you need to convert the cut line for two types. The one you want to do a you know, creasing, just a line, just to set, you know, for example, cut contour creasing. The line you want to do the uh, you know, die cut, convert that spot color name, the cut line convert name, uh, cut, cut line spot color name as a cut contour die, just for you to remember which line is for what purposes but you can put as many settings as you want. If you wanna do like, a, you know, like different pressure for this direction, that direction for creasing, you can put a different color and different spot color name as a creasing light or creasing hard or something like that. After you created this job for two different cut contour name spot color, you export that job to rastering six, right? When you export the print and cut job into a raster link, especially for print and cut machine, because I'm telling you this is, you know, when you selecting UCJB 300 for printing, you are able to tell each uh, the cutting path, cut controller creasing, cut controller die cut, with a different setting from, uh, you know, from raster link. When you do an ID cut, the raster link will send this separate, you know, the cut condition data to the, uh, you know, uh, cutting link. So you can simply detect ID on a CFL plotter and a creasing with a crease with a creasing layer and cut with a die cut layer. But you need to tell this, you know, condition cut one, cut two, cut three, cut four, cut five, cut six, cut seven to the, uh, you know, um, if you go to a you know, CFL 605 or CF2, you are able to assign the cutting condition for each cut number. For example, cut one, you can do 1500 grams of the creasing, cut two, uh, 1500 grams with a reciprocator knife, cut three, hundreds of, uh, thousand grams of the, uh, you know, the die cut or tangential knife, so you need to remember which cut number refers to the what condition. However, as long as you remember that properly, you can easily convert that, you, you can easily set up those uh, cut contour layer, each layers with uh, each pass, uh, each cutting setting to execute the, you know, the two layers box job, two layers package, packaging job with uh, uh, CFL 605. Right, when you do, Print with a printer, no print and cut machine, and cut with cutter. What you can do is you need to select the cut layer and cut condition from fine cut, from fine cut nine. So what you can do is in the job, you just select a different color. For example, black for cut and red for red for creasing. In the fine cut you can specify the layer, the cut condition per each path, the each colors of the cut. So for example, uh, for black line, I just put the uh, um, the cut one, which pre-registered in the CFL machine as a you know, tangential cut, and the red line as the cut two, as I uh, pre-registered in CFL as the creasing line. In order to do ID cut through fine cut, you can refer to the Abesan's video in three months ago when Abesan did the you know, more than two separate layers for you know, printing and cutting with a different machine through fine cut. But ID cut, the ID cut needs to be defined from fine cut nine in this case. You cannot do ID cut uh, with a two layers from a raster link if you are selecting a print only machine. So you have more, you have two ways to do this, depends on if you have a print and cut machine for print or printer machine for print. The last tip for the ID cut is doing the kiss cut and half cut in the same job. It's again also different, you know, different method. If you do print and cut machine for uh, kiss and half cut, or if you do 
printer machine and separate cutter for this job. It's basically the same. When you design this, you know, uh, the sticker sheet, the one page sticker sheet, you need to, you know, design, you know, one line for uh, uh, the half cut. You need to do the, you know, the green line as the, uh, um, the kiss cut. And both needs to have the different color. Well, it can be the same color as visible, but having a different color in visible will make your life a little bit easier. So you basically make two different lines and with a color, and one should show cut controller, and the other one should show cut controller half or cut controller die or cut controller, you know, sewing or whatever it's called as long as it has a different spot color name as a cut controller. Once you define that, once you define and uh, put the, once you add the uh, uh, two different spot color name for the uh, two layers job, you can export the job into rastering six. And then same thing as the uh, uh, last page. You can define you know, each layer, the cut controller one, is to be cut one for the uh, for the kiss cut, and cut controller two will be uh, you know cut two or cut three whatever the print condition which defines a half cut. All right, if you do option two, print and cut with different machine, then you must do this configuration from fine cut nine. So again, this can be explained from Abhisan's, you know, Abhisan's, uh, the previous webinar you know, three months ago, because to you know, put in a two different uh, you know, layer for the cut and doing an uh, ID cut. Again, but simply, you know, just to change the you know, color of the cut between a uh, controller cut and kiss cut, sorry, uh, kiss cut and half cut, and put a different, uh, you know, different color, and you just change the cut condition from the each, uh, from uh, each uh, cut path. Any questions for ID cut before we go to a two and a half day print? Yes, uh, Tomo san. Uh, yes, you said when, yes, yes, uh, uh, Tomo san. Uh, you said when. You have problem with the ID cut, then you choose the other option like normal crop marks. Yes, that's the that's the solution or option. Well, is that option or a solution? Solution means ID cut ID cut is failed. That's why we are using the normal rejo marks. Yes, but if, if customer says means uh, I I need ID cut, I only need ID cut. I don't want to use the rejo mark. Let's put it like this. Well, you know, the, this solution was that the, uh, you know, well, if a print was completed, where, where yep. is that? Yeah, if a print, if a print is completed, but then yep. somehow ID cut didn't work for that print result. All right. right? So what cust what disappoints the customer is, hey, Mr. Customer, you need to print it again by changing such setting. Right. Yep. If customer is doing 100 pieces of the print, you know, they might be still agree with that. But in case customers say, oh, I just have this print and I don't want to reprint, blah, blah, blah. That way I'm telling you that the, you know, there's an you know, option. Well, there's still a way to perform. The oh, cut OK, OK. So when, if yeah, I when if, I when I this when I this failed. All right. So if we if we just uh, uh, disable this ID, uh, the ID cut option. If yep. I just uh, scan those mark and send the cut job, it will it will cut that job. It will. Oh, okay, that, yeah, that's good. But only the caution though, this trick only works for print and cut machine because we are sending cut job from raster link. Yeah. So if you yes, are, you know, if you are, if you are printing with a JB three hundred cut with CGFX plus, this will not work. All right. Yeah. Because you know CGFX plus you cannot print from rastering, right? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I want to, but uh, yeah. you know, unfortunately, you can't do it at this moment. So yeah, yeah. Or you need to go back to uh, you know original file in the uh, you know uh, in the 
in the Adobe Illustrator and make sure where the crop mark is locating, comparing to uh, you know the raster link, raster link yeah. crop mark, yeah, and yeah. do the job. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it will be harder. No, that's right. No, that's good actually. I didn't know that, so that's good option. Still good option. Yeah. Very, very good. Option. In the in the worst case scenario, if a printer, uh, if a well, printer sometimes detect an you know, ID line as a part of a resume mark. In that yeah. case, you may put you 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 probably need to put a white masking tape to yes. mask up, yeah to hide the ID. That way, yeah. you know, printer only detects a you know, resume mark. Yes, yes. No, no, that's very good option for some customers. <laughs> Just <laughs> idea. Yeah. 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 Right, I can just you know get the, you know such a question you know later on in a class. Yeah, let me just go move forward. Or right, benefit of Mimaki two and a half D print, right? I'm telling you that the two and a half D print which we released in three years ago with the JFX two hundred EX, that wasn't even new technology. The two and a half D print exists since you know, 1695, where the you know the artist you know that who does the you know the the art in the Netherlands, you know, so where was the first time the people, you know, start doing a two and a half D, well, not printing, but two and a half D artwork, right? But what's the benefit of Mimaki two and a half D printing? Is because we just making something easy, right? The raised texture printing is what it's called as a two and a half D printing. And as long as you're utilizing a UV ink technology, it's even not a new technology. However, processing of generating raised artwork for printing never been easy for everyone. For example, if you, you know, if you're trying to do like something like moisture or some condensation on the, you know, little, you know, the can of a Coca-Cola to print without any software, you probably need to think about, hey, I need to print maybe a 15 layer of the job. First layer is this big, second layer is a little small, third layer is a little small, fourth layer is a little small, and you need to, you know, convert, in, you need to calculate like how much of the doming you want to do, or if a doming can be just, you know, raised up suddenly, or doming can be smooth, something like that. For the you know, job, or the, job for the art worker for this process is just to be you know just so much complicated till we've got you know the two, uh, until we've got you know the proper software, right? The software we have is free of charge. However, three years ago, you know, three years before we did this, uh, you know, two and a half D texture maker in the rustering plugin software. There was about a twenty-nine thousand dollars, about thirty thousand dollars of the software from uh, Ose, Arizona, from a Canon Production Printing. They've got software, you know, for uh, people, you know, art worker to enter, you know, how much, you know, the doming should be, what the height should be, and so on. By entering that, the it automatically slice up the every layer, the artwork for every layer. There was such a software which you can buy at the same price as the one of the printer. But again, people just you know the reject to buy such a you know, high investment cost of uh, software. So what's the benefit again with Mimaki is we have free of charge software comes with JFX 200 or rastering 6, can do one touch, two and a half D print, you know, job editing. Right. Um, before we go to a process of the two and a half day print, um, some of you may already try before, but some of them haven't. Um, there are two different methods to print. Right. You can choose this from uh, you know the at the point where you know before printing. And you need to you don't need to worry about at the designing of the designing of the artwork. Because it's just relates to I know the mode is related to the print speed. So you can choose from two speed, uh, standard mode and high speed mode. 
standard, standard model is basically to raise up the artwork, to raise up a print by using a clear ink. The high speed model is basically to use to raise up your design ink with using a CMYK four colors ink. Standard mode, you can only use a one color, single color to print a two and a half D raise up uh, the texture. So it takes, uh, you know, it takes a uh, real time to complete the print. High speed mode using four channels of CMYK. So it's technically about three times or more than three times faster to raise up the uh, design. So that's the reason we call high speed mode. However, if you really worried about like, you know, what's the, uh, like, you know, if there's so much contrast thing, like uh, if you want to do two and a half D printing for someone's like a traditional artwork, we always recommend the standard mode because standard mode has still a you know, higher resolution for the uh, for the uh, you know the height direction to put as the difference of the height equals to the difference of the texture. But high speed mode, you only have the up to six layers, so resolution is about three times less than the standard mode. So it's only recommended for the vector image file, for only object file and so on. Right? Just, um, just explaining, you know, different artwork and which mode you should use to print and what, uh, what method to print. I've got two different methods. This, um, the, the test artwork is also sent to you uh, in the last uh, Friday, Friday last week, so you can play around later on. I'm putting a two, um, two example, grayscale, which, you know, is called as also bitmap or Photoshop data. So basically it's a photographic data and it's also extracting the uh, you know grayscale image where you want to where you want to raise up within the image, right? Two different data. The second one is a vector image. It's just a good example, simple example, you know, which is a braille artwork, object and illustrator, which you know normally people calls. So the method or you know the workflow to do a two and a half D print is different between grayscale and the vector image. For grayscale image, what you do is you can just apply two and a half D print directly in rastering six. So you just enter, you just import those two different data, the color data and the grayscale data into um, into rastering directly. And you can just edit a two and a half D, apply two and a half D for this grayscale image directly in the uh, rastering six, two and a half D texture function. However, if you have a vector image, right? If you have a vector image, you need to apply two and a half D print by a rastering tool. Right, without using rastering tool and doing directly in the two and a half D in the in the rastering six, it will miss out the colored data and the machine sometimes is not going to print. So this is what I did with one of the customer in Sydney for about four hours. Hey, what's the reason of the printer is not printing? Because I directly import this to rastering six and trying to apply two and a half D job for this and it didn't print because it didn't process properly. So the reason you should do in a rastering tool for you know, processing two and a half D for object is because the rastering, so rastering tool is able to separate this as the, uh, just a black image for the spot color and the colored image as a separately. So it will convert the spot color, uh, spot color data as the uh, two and a half D and the color image as a color image, and it will layer automatically in rastering six. So just remember, again, this is what I did totally of 16 hours to find out what it is before. So, you know, again, you know, do grayscale directly in rastering software. If this is a vector image, object illustrator image, do it in illustrator with rastering tool.
All right, I'm going to give you a quick YouTube video uh, for, you know, how you can pre-set up and create, you know, and print the uh, uh, two and a half D. All right, thanks for watching. So those videos are available in my uh, YouTube channel and uh, in also Mimaki Australia's channel. So make sure you subscribe and just uh, you know, learn from you know, whatever the video we have. You know, there are lots of you know, one hour video for like a presentation, previous webinar for sales team, dealers network and Abisan provided for uh, you know, our internal technical team and my uh, training for data's technical change. So it's just a lot of video to, you know, survive with. Um, all right, just a you know, little uh, tips that I want to go through for two and a half D printing. Well, basically only one chip, you know, because, you know, people is expecting using two and a half D print for Braille sign application. But I can tell you from what I did with customer before, it's, it's not suitable. Right, the reason is here. Because to uh, Australian Braille sign, uh, you know, the legal, the act, the textile character must be raised or embossed to a height of not less than one millimeter, not more than 1.5 millimeter. That means you need to have the, uh, you know, the height of the object more than one millimeter and less than 1.5 millimeter. However, if you use two and a half D print, even for six layers for high speed or 17 layers for uh, standard speed, max height will be about 0.5 millimeter by using 70 layers standard or six layers for high speed. Right, then do you want to print twice more, which is 34 layers or 12 layers? You can do it, but you know, Having saying that you know, one braille sign to be sold to our end-to-end -end user for you know about $75 for a piece, and do you want to spend you know the, like two hours to print for $75 of a piece? You know, I don't think it's uh you know the liable for the business. So you know again, two and a half D print is not suitable for uh, this application. Otherwise, the object must be minimum three millimeter thick. Well, this is regards to the you know, uh, limitation of the two and a half D printing software from a uh, from a uh, rustering tool. That if you have an object less than three millimeters, it's not gonna even print because you cannot you know the, because software cannot export extract the you know how small the object is on the top layer, which is the smallest part. But according to uh, Australian Braille Sign Act, the standard, the thickness of a letter stroke must be not less than two millimeter and not more than seven millimeter. 
So basically, as long as you make like you know, one object of the braille dot for about five millimeter, it is still printable. But the people, what people want for you know, the, in a standard well, like a normal braille signage for the building is like a you know, dot to be real small, like uh, even less than three millimeters. So I don't recommend using two and a half D print. But however, of course, there is a you know, certain customer you know, interesting, interesting to use to, uh, to print a braille signage with a digital. So this is my uh, you know, suggestion to at least two customers before, and you can do it with any, well, any flatbed printer from the market. So instead of using two and a half D print for braille, sign, uh, for, for braille use below standard layering. All right, no function, no special functions required. First, the color replacement, entire object to CMYK. You can do raster link CMYK 100% for entire object. In the Australian Braille standard, you need to raise not only a dots, but also the object. So entire object, which is a mark of a man, woman, and wheelchair, and a frame of wheelchair, the, also the text. Those entire signage is preferred, it's not mandatory, but preferred to be raised, you know, for any sign writer. Most of the sign writer is doing a braille signage. So convert everything to CNYK 100%. In the rastering software, select nine over print, which is nine layer to print. Also, the execute for two or three times to make enough height. Doing nine over prints for CMYK 100%, from my experience, it reaches to the 0.4 millimeters of height. If you do two times, you can still do 0.8 millimeters of the height. I've done this with the LUS 120 flexible ink. Of course, if you make, if you use a harder ink LH100, I think twice of the copy of the print copy of twice should be uh, should be within the range for one millimeter tolerance, but of to me, you know, I've done with our areas 120, so three I need to do three times anyway. After print nine layers of three times CMYK 100%, then you can do the color replacement of the data to white, right? So you basically need to overprint with white, so you can hide the CMYK you know, object, the, the CMYK 100% colored object. You need to do two overprints for white in order to, you know, uh, hide, the, hide the black layer uh, sufficiently. And lastly, you can print the original color, you know, just to bring back uh, original data to uh, original color and cancel all the spot color replacement, then print the original colors. This way, you, the, it is the uh, most simple way for me and the uh, two customers which I supported agreed with using this instead of the uh, two and a half D or Braille, uh, Braille functions. There is still a Braille function in rastering tool, but it is not suitable for below reasons. First reason, it supports only LH100 thing, right? So some customer already invested UGF with the 120 ink. Well, most of the JFX 200 is installed with the LUS 150 ink, right? So that way, you know, the limitation of only using LH100 is not suitable. Also, Braille is not applied for dot letters because Braille signage in the rastering plugin, rastering uh, tool, it's a uh, standard for uh, you know, American with Americans with Disability Act. So it's not supporting to you know raise up the uh, you know braille object like those objects and even text. It only that this function only works for the dot part in the image. So which is requested by uh, you know, Americans with disability. All right, I was trying to do the, uh, you know, the small demo for, you know, set up this, but uh, I think time has come already. And the, uh, you know, my, uh, my uh, you know, rustering, you know, the, yeah, my uh, personal rustering PC, just, you know, the crash for the password. So I'm not able to, 
show the demonstration at this moment. So I'd like to just you know, get your uh, question if you have. Oh, uh, you know, just a uh, ten minutes or uh, even fifteen minutes. I just want to, you know, have a free chat with, uh, you know, with team. So any questions, you know, welcome. That video you had before, Tomo, um, of the 